What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's FFDev here and in this video we're going to be setting up the game states and the networking so we can start playing multiplayer. This format of this video will be a little bit different because I recorded and when I recorded already it was corrupted so usually I type it in with you. <clears throat> but either way, I'll still walk you through the process. So first things first, at the very top you're going to want to create an SF vector 2 like under your asset manager asset um, we're going to create a sf vector 2f named mouse world pause and i just set it to zero zero and also in the asset manager uh we did have a mouse world position something i don't remember exactly what it was a uh, rectangle shape for mouse shape we don't need that so go ahead and delete that but anyways back to our main function after you add in this main world we're gonna go ahead under our uh, our main world position under our game state class we're gonna add in a game state and you have to put the curly brackets under this or after it so we just named it game state and then game state and curly brackets and then add an apostrophe or a uh, semicolon to close it if you don't put the um, curly braces here you're gonna get an initialization error now by default that this is initialized, it's going to be in the main menu state. So there's a couple of things we're going to be changing. So when we scroll down here, everything here looks the same as usual. Um, besides, uh, there was a, uh, I don't remember exactly where I had it, it was in the while loop. I guess it's still probably there. So no, initially we had, uh, I'll try to make it look the same as possible to yours, you know. So initially we had a P1, P2 update here. Um, but um, it's not going to be that important for now. What we're going to do is go ahead and just leave those here for now. But when we get to our while loop, our main game loop while windows open, you're going to put uh, right under these two updates, you're going to put while game state is equal to game state colon colon main menu, just as I have it. Then you're going to type in sf vector 2i mouse pause equals sf mouse get position. And then the par parameters it's going to take in is just going to be the window. And then you're going to put mouse world pause equals window dot map pixels to chords My mouse pause okay so now that we have uh, that we're just gonna want to do one thing you're gonna want to type in I'll show you how this works you're gonna put in another while loop in here well, another while window dot poll event and then event you know it looks similar to how we had it set up before <laughs> But on the SF event closed, we're going to put game state equals game state closed. And on when you press escape, you're going to put it to game state equals game state closed. And uh, we'll set that up in a minute. Just uh, if you have to pause the video if I'm going a little too fast, just pause it. Make sure you have this the same. Um, this right here is the big one. We're going to check an if state under those. This is if SF mouse is button pressed. SF mouse left. This is checking for a left click on the mouse and we're going to check and we're going to look do our am.join sprites or asset manager or join game sprite get global bounds dot contains and you're going to put mouse world position in that. So basically we're checking if we're clicking on the uh, join game sprite by checking to see if the mouse world position to see if the mouse is over the join game sprite when we click it. If so game state equals game state playing and under these right here in this while loop here for the main menu you're going to have a window clear uh, you're going to draw the main menu sprite the host game sprite the join game sprite and the pong online sprite and then display so it is like a little bit of duplication of code but you'll see why i'm doing it. i'm just keeping everything encapsulated and the reason that we're just changing the state here instead of closing the window is because this is a while loop if that makes any sense. If we didn't change the state, we just put close the window. Uh, we would close the window, but our program would never finish because we'd be still stuck in the while loop. Alright. 
So now, under this, after you get out of the main uh, menu while loop for the game state, you're going to create if game state is equal game state close. This is easy. Window.close. That's all you got to do. Now, what we will do is if game state is equal to game state playing, we're going to update the local player here. P1.update. Take in the delta time as usual. Then we're going to send the position of player one to the server so the other player can see where player one's at. That way it updates on their screen as well. So you're going to create an SF vector 2F, name it P1 position, and it equals P1 dot get shape dot get position. Then below that, we're going to create an ENET packet, and it's a pointer, and we're going to name it packet and it equals enet packet create and it takes a reference to p1 position and the second parameter is size of vector 2 because the vector 2 is what we're sending so we want to get the size of it that way it knows how big the packet's supposed to be and then after that there's going to be you're going to put an enet packet flag reliable <laughs> after this line you're going to put enet peer send just as i have here and the parameters it's going to take is server, zero, and packet. Now, uh, you're just going to have our while loop with the poll event like we did originally had, where we can just close the game from this from this loop just by doing window close or if keys press window close. So that's the same. Um, under here, this is where it, I believe it changes a little bit the while enet host service client you know we created this while loop earlier it's greater than zero in the if net dot type is equal to enet event type receive inside here we're going to add another if statement within the if statement so if the net event dot packet data link is equal to size of vector 2f then sf vector 2f p2 position that's what we're gonna name it mem copy p2 position net event dot packet data size of vector 2f p2 dot set position to p2 position so what we're doing here basically is we are receiving the player 2 position from the uh, client whoever's you know connected so by doing that uh, we're gonna be able to update the player 2 position um from here, I still don't like the way this looks like it's format. Let me indent that just a little bit so we can tell it's in there. Um, then below this, as usual, you know, because it's not much, this is all within the playing if statement, so follow this down. The bottom, there's a window clear, window.draw p1.get shape, window.draw p2.get shape, and window.display. And then nothing down here has changed. Uh, now at the top, I'm going to go ahead, scroll back up to the top, or our while loop. Let's see. While it's open, I'm going to go ahead and just delete the p1.update from there because I don't need it there. Uh, for now, I have been click on our join game and start our game. And the paddle's still moving where we want it, to, or with the other paddle whenever we do it because we're. Um, still updating it here and so it's still getting our controls however we're going to change that in the next video i'm going to um leave uh leave it like this for now because i know everything was a little bit complicated if you have to go back and rewatch the video and pause it some places to make sure your cuz same as mine do that and i know i went through this pretty fast but don't worry i'm going to create a tech technical document to put in the description That'll explain exactly all these changes we made, like if server, I'll explain everything going on here, and I'll explain everything in detail going on here. That way you guys know what's going on. And um, because this is kind of a lot to absorb in one information, or in one video, I'm gonna try to finish it in the next video and we'll be done with this series. And hopefully, after that, you'll have a working multiplayer game and have a good foundation to create your own games. If you found this video helpful, Hit the like button, and if you haven't, hit the subscribe button. It helps a lot, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye.